Hello, and welcome to the Redesigning Wellness Podcast. Last week, I was in my car, and this week, I'm in a hotel room in Black Mountain, North Carolina, speaking at a leadership conference. Uh, So if you hear the air conditioner in the background, you can't help it. Before that, I was in Asheville, North Carolina, facilitating a resilience training. So I've been gone and on the road for about four days. Now, if you haven't been to Western North Carolina, I recommend you come visit it. It is beautiful. I'm in I'm in nature. I'm in Black Mountain. There's mountains everywhere. There's actually a bear, a mama bear with some cubs. So I'm going to get out for a hike later. Yeah, but let me tell you a little tip. If you are going to speak or if you are traveling overnight when you are speaking, make sure you bring a hairdryer. I was trying to pack light and decided, you know, I don't need it. All the hotel rooms that I'm going to be in, they're going to have one. Yeah, not this one. And today's the day of my talk. So my hair won't look the best, but I'm going to have to roll with it. And I realize that sounds very vain, but uh, and it kind of is. But when you're speaking, people are looking at you for an hour, so you at least want your hair to look decent. So just a little tip. I wanted you to take that away. Now, I really appreciate people who take action and really improving the wellness industry, kind of pushing us forward. Uh, and, you know, let's face it, we've had the same health promotion conferences for ages. And, uh, you know, kind of like when people shake things up. You may have heard Brian Passan and Evan Foss on, God, a couple years ago, that when they started at Wellness Underground, I had them on, I think, in year two to promote their conference. Um, they're now going on year five. And uh, it's hard work getting a conference up and running and starting something completely new. And, you know, it's it's hard. So today's guests are doing it now with the Fusion 2.0 conference. So I wanted to bring Rosie Ward and Scott Life to, on to talk about what they're trying to accomplish with their new conference this November. Let me tell you a little bit about Rosie and Scott Some of you may know Rosie. She is a three-peat guest. She's been on her interview just about her. She's been on a panel on this podcast, and then now she's coming on with Scott. Rosie is CEO and co-founder of Salveo Partners, and she consults with organizations, blending the worlds of organizational development and employee well-being to provide a unique approach to creating thriving workplace cultures that free, fuel, and inspire people to bring their best selves to work. And Scott Life consults with courageous leaders looking to build and sustain thriving workplace cultures by leveraging strong leadership development, as well as the fusion of organizational and employee well-being. So Scott, this is interesting to me because I didn't know this about him. He uh, has been a president of a manufacturing business from 2003 to 2016. And during that time, his company achieved a uh, 14.7 compound annual growth rate and implemented a robust employee well-being program that continues today. So I think it's a really cool perspective for Scott to have because it's not like maybe the rest of us to where we have some kind of health education training and we're in employee well-being. So he sees it from an entirely different perspective. But today we talk about how this idea or how Fusion 2.0 got from an idea to an actual conference. And it's interesting. I learned a lot. Just they had an original date in mind, but move it to November for a specific person, which Rosie will mention. I asked them, why is it different? We've got a million conferences out there. So what makes Fusion 2.0 so special? And uh, more details on how to register. It is cool. I'm going to go ahead and spoiler alert here. There is a planning committee made up of really cool well-being professionals, wellness professionals, whatever you want to call them. And you got Michelle Spear, Rana DeBoer, Stephanie Downs. And so people have been on this podcast and uh, I think the world of. So we've got some great people planning and they talk about that a little bit more. And then stay tuned to the end because Rosie offers you all a $200 discount off the conference. So I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope to see some of you there as well. Now, before we dive into the interview, let me just say one quick thing. 
Next week is the deadline to join my small group training. That is going to be a six week uh, weekly call on Zoom. So it's a online where we talk about some really progressive well being topics, right? So how do you get it from a wellness program to more integrated in the business? What are some new metrics you may want to look at? What do you do with leaders and managers in your organization? And then as well as answering your questions, I'm asking everyone what's your number one challenge and what do you want to make sure that you achieve out of this six week training? So if you are interested, you can either go to redesigningwellness.com. There is a link to pay for it. Or if you have questions or just want to chat about it, shoot me uh, your information via my contact form on my website at redesigningwellness.com. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into my interview with Rosie Ward and Scott Life. As always, thank you so much for listening to the Redesigning Wellness podcast. Hello and welcome to Redesigning Wellness your go-to podcast for making the most of your corporate health strategies. Your host is Jen Arnold, corporate wellness consultant. With over a decade of experience in promoting worksite health, she'll help boost your wellness program to one your employees are sure to enjoy. And now here's Jen. Scott and Rosie, welcome to the Redesigning Wellness Podcast. So glad to have you on, Scott, and have you back, Rosie. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Jen. Well, there's kind of a big event coming up for you guys, a little thing called the Fusion 2.0 Conference. And before we get into some of the logistics and the details, let's talk about how it came about. Like what (laughs) made you have this crazy idea to plan a conference? It it is a little crazy, isn't it? So... (laughs) Honestly, it came about from wellness people, to be perfectly honest, I would say go back probably five years ago and attending other nationally based wellness conferences. I won't mention any names and talking with attendees, mainly people who've been in the field a long time, either we're skipping out of sessions or we're on breaks and looking at each other going, are you freaking kidding me? Like there cannot be one more session on wearable devices at work or just the same old, same old and, and watching people be really frustrated and going to a couple sessions, which is kind of what the heck and feeling stale. And, and someone like five, six years ago said, you know, there's gotta be, you should have your own conference. And I was like, yeah. And then other people would say, and it just keep coming up as I feel like as either nothing new is happening or as the wellness industry was maybe going backwards in a lot of ways, some of these conferences were having a lot of those sessions. And there was just a general unrest and frustration, not just of myself and and the people on the planning committee, but really others. And, and it's, so it's been bubbling and brewing, honestly, for a long time. And I remember actually two of the people on the planning committee, uh, Stephanie Downs from Iowa State and Michelle Spear, we sat at a conference probably three years ago and said, we have to do our own conference. I just can't do this anymore. Like, we, just, we can't do this anymore. And so, but it's like, yeah, it's nice. One thing to say, it's another thing to do it. And so a year and a half ago, I spoke at one conference and it was really bad. And I just said, I can't, I'm done. And we've got to figure out a better way. And what I mean by being done is, you know, not only is it the same old, same old, but I was noticing when I would speak at Sherm based conferences or attend other conferences. It's a similar thing in the human resources world and even leadership conferences. You have where people go because they need continuing ed, or quite honestly, they go because it's like they look at it as a mini vacation from work and they're socializing, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like if you're going to take time away from your family and your work, doesn't go away while you're gone. Don't you want it to be relevant and meaningful and useful? And I would listen to people and they would talk and they would just say, yeah, I got a few good nuggets, but then they would go back home and they really couldn't do anything different. So you get inspired for a while and they go, oh yeah, I think I have my notes somewhere and it sits on a shelf. And, and so I'm like, what are we doing? And I started to read articles that there's just a general unrest in professional development conferences. Cause it's the same thing. A lot of money, people coming together, get inspired, but go back and nothing's changed. And And I just thought there's got to be a better way. And so everything we do is in building community and bringing others along. And so I just thought, well, let's, let's figure this out. And at Salveo Partners, we talk about the fusion in terms of the inextricable interconnectedness of organizational well-being and employee well-being. And so where Fusion 2.0 came about is I thought, you know, even though we at Salveo Partners really consider and include safety and risk management in the employee well-being side when we're talking about the fusion. 
you know, I have friends in the risk management and safety world, and they face very similar challenges that the wellness industry faces in that it's a lot of compliance, check the box, but is there, quote unquote, a culture of safety or where people actually care? And, it, you know, is it lip service? And they say one thing that safety is a priority, but do other things. And so I thought you have these disciplines that are all trying to positively impact the employee experience, yet they go to their own siloed conferences. They rarely integrate on a day-to-day basis, let alone in a professional education environment. And we've got to bring these people together. And so that's where the Fusion 2.0 came, because it's now really looking at very intentionally collaborating with safety and risk management. And so got the web domain, started brainstorming and thinking about what would this look like and figured we'd have it in Minneapolis initially, at least because that's where where I'm located and, and to be involved with the venue and those types of things. Hey, Rosie, and- I'm going I'm to interrupt you real quick. Yeah. <laughs> because it seemed like, was there a moment? It sounds like yeah. there were several moments where you're yeah. like, Okay, yeah, maybe I should do this. Well, maybe, yeah, someone's saying it again. But was there was there anything that happened that made you go, okay, yes, this is going to be it? Or again, was it just that those series of moments that you decided to go for it? Yeah, that's a good question. And I feel like it was a series of moments, but I will be perfectly honest that it was one particular conference that I was at that is one that a lot of wellness people go to. And I had spoken at it and I was there with a lot of wellness leaders and I was there with Ryan Piccarella from Wakoa and others. And I just remember talking with a bunch of people and saying, this is so bad. Like it is so bad. And that the keynotes had gone, it was just bad. And a lot of people were talking about it and saying, what is happening? And I thought, is this the best our industry can do? And I left that conference having conversations with people being very motivated and propelled to do something different. I just didn't know what exactly it was going to look like. And so I think it was a few months later of kind of trying to figure out what would this be that then led to let's get the web domain and screw it, we're doing it. And when you say we, who is the we? The we, well, it started with my business partner, John and myself, but we, because I had been talking, like I will, like right off the bat, I reached out to Stephanie Downs from Iowa State. I reached out to Michelle Spear from BSG because we had been talking and a few other people, um, Rana DeBoer from uh, Sioux Falls, people who had had similar unrest and thought, can we do this, you guys? And I said, if we do this, so we can't just have wellness people. Like I need to reach out to my network of people who are also awesome in organizational development and learning and development and risk management and safety. And so I started reaching out to my network of people to say, like, who were in that space and also other people did and say, who should we have on this committee and who actually is bought into the idea of we got to do this. And so it took a couple of months to assemble a group of people who were interested in being the planning team to make this go. And then some people dropped off some, you know, I mean, it's because it's been almost two years in the making, but um, we, we assembled a multidisciplinary group of people. Some are in marketing communications. One is a professional executive coach. uh, Some are in wellness. Some are human resources. Some are risk management. So it's been just a really amazing, some people I didn't know before I met them through other people. And so it's just been a really amazing group of people who thought they want to be involved. And Scott's one of them. So we're pretty fortunate in that regard. And so then it just kind of started, it started with an idea of, yeah, I want to be involved and not really knowing what we were getting ourselves <laughs> into. And then it's, it's just, it's been a slow and steady evolution. And one thing that is, so we initially thought, you know what, if it's going to be in Minneapolis, you know, let's have it like mid, late September because fall in Minneapolis is beautiful and you know people are back to school and it's not into busy open enrollment time yet. And that was the plan. But I, as you know, Jen, I, I've known Bob Chapman from Barry Waymiller for a long time and he's just amazing. And when I had my first, my first initial meeting with him back, gosh, almost not quite two years ago, And I was telling him about our idea for this conference and that it was called Fusion 2.0. And as far as we've gotten is it was going to be, you know, in September and we hadn't officially booked the venue, but this is what we were thinking. And as I was telling him about it, he said, I love this. It's a purposeful gathering of humanity. And I said, oh my God. And that was our initial tagline and it's morphed over time. And as I spoke to Bob, I said, there's no other person that can be 
the opening keynote for this first ever conference about bringing humanity back to the workplace than you. And so when he agreed to speak, he because he travels all the time, Barry Waymiller does have a location in Minneapolis. He said that he was happy to do it if we'd be willing to consider moving the date to the beginning of November. And of course, I said I'd do it in a heartbeat, even though the weather's not as nice as September. <laughs> Don't tell me, don't tell me that, Rosie, no, come it's, on. It's not bad. It's, <laughs> you're not going to have snow yet or anything like that. It's, you know, it's not below zero. It's just, you know, it's not going to be 60s and sunny and, you know, all that type of stuff. So, yeah. So anyway, that was, that was where that came from. And then I said, well, I know it's kind of getting into open enrollment, but this, we have to, like, I just, I, I knew I had to have Bob Chapman be a part of this. And so that's really what kind of solidified the date, getting booking the venue and then moving from there to say, okay, Bob's our opening keynote, now what? And it's built from there. Wow. I had no idea this was like two years in the making. And I think yeah. it just gives people a little bit of insight. Like when you're going to a conference, it takes so much work and so much effort in general, even if you have them going for years and years, but much less just to start it. So thank you for that insight. Um, and I want to get back to the speakers in a minute, but Scott, tell us a little bit about you and kind of what your role is in planning and, and just any insight you've had over the past couple of years. Yeah, so I think the stars aligned. It was about two years ago that I met Rosie. I actually did the Salveo Partners uh, training course, the Thriving Workplace Culture Certificate. And it was that time that there was the chatter about, hey, we've got to do this conference. And, you know, being new to the space, the well-being space, uh, I was looking to network and align myself with folks in a similar mindset that it was a holistic approach. It wasn't just about the physical health. And, you know, hearing Rosie talk about it, I was like, boy, this, this should have existed years ago. Why doesn't it exist? So as it gained momentum, uh, and, and I think Rosie had that, hey, hold my wine moment with, with her, her <laughs> colleagues. I said, well, well, hold my beer. I'm in too. Uh, count, <laughs> count me in. So it's been a great journey and it's been very organic. Folks that uh, believe in fusion are on the planning team. Uh, many are voluntary, uh, just a few are, are paid positions, but yeah, it's been great in terms of the networking, seeing it sort of come to life. Uh, so we're excited for November and we hope uh, a lot of people find their way to Minneapolis. Yeah, it's like having a baby, like maybe like an elephant baby. Don't they take like two years to, to be yeah, the, born? The gestation period has been much longer than nine months. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm sure it'll feel like that. Your baby will be born. Um, you know, in November. it might. Well, you know, and Jen, you said something really interesting. In various points of my career, I have been part of planning committees for one day local conferences. And, you know, you're giving ideas and whatnot, but I think even then you don't necessarily have a total sense of what's going on because you're usually brought in to help out and be boots on the ground when you're there and get some ideas and maybe get some um, partners. But a multi-day national, like, I just, I had no idea. And so I'm so thankful for, I mean, a lot of us, some people have never planned an event. Some people have never planned an event in their life. And uh, some people, you know, some people are, um, you know, they, they have a lot of experience. So I think that a lot of people have been doing this for the first time, which is why we, we, like Scott said, we do have some people who know what they're doing and are, and are paid as well. But it's, um, yeah, it's being behind the scenes. It's night and day, but it's been pretty enlightening and a great learning experience. And I'm very excited for sure. Yeah. And so you mentioned earlier that you said that there's different disciplines that there's definitely Stephanie Rand and Michelle have all, all been past guests. So I can link up their yeah. interviews in the show notes just to, to understand where they're coming from. Who are, who do you want to come to this conference? Cause you, when we were talking before, you said that it's only, it's less than half wellness professionals yeah. that have already registered, but who are the rest of the people? Yeah. So we've got a nice mix right now of wellness and wellbeing professionals of organizational effectiveness, uh, professionals, human resource professionals, and a little bit smaller on the safety and risk management, but certainly we're, we're, we're hoping to, to grow that part of it. And really with each respective discipline, who is signed up so far and really who is, I think, going to get the most out of fusion are the forward thinking, I'm just going to say change makers of the profession, whether you're inside or you're a consultant, it's the people who really want things to be better, want to be effective. They're probably, you know, it may or may not be someone who's early on in their career, um, but it's people who really want to influence change. You know, we do have some people who've probably been doing this a long time and and are, are feeling stuck. We've got people who just are go-getters. But if you, you look, I mean, it's no slouch. I mean, there's a lot of, you got some business owners, you've got, you know, senior executive level people in their respective consultants. So it's a great caliber of people, I think, that are going to be bringing some energy into really having some intentional learning and discussions and networking with each other about how do we actually do this? How do we actually 
get out of our silos, collaborate and make more human workplaces so that everybody can thrive and stop unintentionally stepping on each other's toes when you, you've got the same group of employee that everybody is trying to, you know, rally for their attention and how can we just do it better? And just, if we, if we all have a common goal of a more human workplace, then all of our respective niches within that umbrella are going to be more effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I want to hold your feet to the fire a little bit. You, know, yep. you mentioned that the other conferences that you were going to weren't kind of doing it for you, for lack of yep. a better word. Yep. Uh, why is this different? Like, how are you really going to make this different than the experiences that you've had in the typical conference? Yep. That's a great question. So there's a few things. So I think that I've been paying attention over the last couple of years while we're planning this. I've gone to various events that I normally wouldn't go to, and I've really been paying attention to what was effective and what what's missing and all those things. And I would say there's a few things. So one, I don't know of any other conference that is multidisciplinary like this, that is truly pulling from all these various disciplines and whatnot. So that, I mean, that's the first thing you can go, okay, great. Well, who cares? But the, with doing that, we are really truly taking an intentional approach. I would say first and foremost, for it to be actionable and relevant so that people don't just go home inspired, but they literally go home with an implementation plan of things that they can start doing and they're supported after the conference. And and here's what I mean by that. So we have a a fabulous conference MC named Daryl Sellers, who's a background in broadcasting and everything that's going to help people's experience. And instead of having a typical notebook, we've put a lot of thought and intention into creating a learning journal that everybody is going to get. And so throughout the conference, from the morning keynote to breakout sessions, to hands-on action-oriented learning labs where people are digging in and walking away with an activity, to innovator series where there's case studies, the the learning journal is going to really follow their experience throughout the conference. And it's designed with, there's going to be mini MCs, if you will, in each room that after each session, it's not just like, great, there's some questions, but we're following an adult learning format called what, so what, now what? So people will be taking notes, a bunch of notes, right? That's the what, what did I learn? What am I noticing? What are they telling me? And then there's going to be intentional thought put into an prompts put into, so what? Like, so help people filter all this information that just got given to them. How do I filter that through? So what does that mean to me? What does that mean to my organization? And then the now what is kind of what am I going to do with that? And so we're we're trying to really help people not just take in information, but actually process it and filter it and apply it as they're going throughout the day. And then at the end of each day, we have a graphic facilitator and the MC facilitating what we're calling synthesized learning sessions where, okay, you've, you've, processed a lot of stuff. You've taken in a lot of stuff. You're probably sitting at a table with people who went to different sessions than you. Let's start to connect the dots so that everyone can kind of what just happened to me and process it. And so the back of the learning journal actually has a fold out that you can eventually rip off implementation plan. And it's the the end of day facilitated learning sessions are going to guide people through processing what they took in the entire day and then literally filling out that plan as they go. So if they have a a takeaway of they know what's next. And then as soon as the conference is done, hopefully within a day or two, we're going to actually, we have someone who we've hired, who's going to be creating a conference learning summary. So everybody is going to get a conference learning summary that's going to follow this process. And then we are going to have a post-conference reinforcement support email campaign, if you will, that's going to go out at 30, 60, 90, and 120 days. So our goal is not come get some ideas and come back the next year and hear the same ideas. Our goal is to really build a community of people who can lean on each other and go back and really try to, you know, fight business as usual and put people first. So that that's probably one of the biggest ways um, that it's different. Other little things um, like I don't know about you, but you go to conferences and they have, you know, an opening reception that's kind of cheesy or whatever. You know, you know me, I'm a party person. I teach Zumba. So we have an opening party that's Caribbean themed. We got this awesome Soka band. Just it's going to be light and it's going to be fun. Um, You know, we're not telling people there's a dress code. It's like, come and be you, come and be human. The other thing, and this is a cue we actually took from Barry Waymiller, that they, they feel like if they're ever going to take people away from their family for a day for one of their training programs that they want them to feel like it was relevant and they made another meaningful human connection. And so also woven in throughout the various meals and breaks and even on your name tag is going to be purposeful networking 
cards, conversation starters that range from having people process what they're experiencing to really getting to know and connect with people on a different level. Um, So those are some of the, the other thing I would say is when we are looking at our partners, so whether someone is sponsoring or they're exhibiting in our discovery zone, we also wanted to be very intentional and say, you know, I don't know about you, but I go to most conferences and I probably ignore the exhibitor area, or I see people go through and are just looking at what freebies do you have on your table and they get a bag full of stuff and, you know, it it, it may or may not be relevant. And so we're, we're having a thorough, I want to say vetting process that every exhibitor we talk to, if we're not familiar with them, we want to make sure that whatever they do, whether it's a wellness related service or a leadership development service or a safety risk management related service, that it really supports the notion of bringing humanity back to the workplace. And, um, and if somebody, you know, let's say in the wellness world is a wellness or else vendor, we encourage them to attend and be enlightened, but we're not, we're not going to offer them an opportunity to exhibit. So we really want people to feel like we do. We really want that. That made me laugh for us because I was like, anyone that would actually apply (laughs) to to do that. But I don't think they would, right. They're like, we want, we've been so intentional about diversity of age, race, with speakers, with, you know, even with the planning team, with making sure that it's, you know, affordable and not at some luxury resort, that it's really, you know, accessible to people. I mean, we've been, that's probably why it's taken two years that we've been trying to be so intentional about all the details that sometimes get overlooked and lost so that people really feel like, hey, you, you want to go talk to the exhibitors and you can trust they're relevant and that they're rooted in good science and they're not doing things that are going to hurt people and, and that you're going to meet people you normally wouldn't align with and you're going to be supported. And those of you who feel like you're on an island and you're going back and trying to implement change, but no one listens to you, you're going to create a community and meet your tribe and, and feel empowered and those types of things. So we're, I don't know, that, that's some of the examples of some of the gaps that we're trying to fill in. Yeah. So you, I mean, after listening to that, you made me never want to plan a conference. So thank you for <laughs> you of that. It was never on my to-do list, but when you were just talking about all that, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot, just a lot of detail to go into it. And yeah. I want to dig into one thing you said that, because I want to understand how it works. It, it sounds like it can be really powerful, but I want to make sure the audience understands it. Yeah, I don't, so let me make sure they do. <laughs> and you're going, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I'll get to experience it. And so hopefully others will join me. But when you're saying, okay, so you go to a session and then there's this, so what, now what? There's a guy, yep. MC, helping us work through it. So like we go through it, we're taking notes and then there is some debrief there. Do we all yep. like go, here's what I learned or here's like, how does it actually work? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think it depends on the type of session that you're in. So for example, if you look, I mean, we want to keep some things familiar that don't freak people out, but other than the speakers are amazing. But in the beginning of each day, there will be a keynote. And then when the keynote's done, the MC will encourage people as they're taking notes to say, okay, you heard a lot of things. So take a couple of minutes and reflect on, so with everything you heard, so what? What's relevant to you? What's relevant to your organization? Because if you don't process it then and there, you just go back and have notes. You're like, oh, so it's giving people that space to like now process what you've heard. And then now what, if you have ideas of what you might do next, and it might be, I'm going to go get that book, or I'm going to talk to this person, but jot that down. So there's going to be, you know, a few minutes at the end of each type of session where Mm -hmm. whoever's in the room is going to really intentionally guide people to, because that's how they're going to likely have stuff stick and have a meaningful experience. And then the breakout sessions, most people are familiar with breakout sessions. The learning labs are longer sessions and they're very much focused on hands-on practical applications. So you're not going to be just sitting in there taking notes. You're going to actually be walking through some type of exercise, walking through some kind of, you're going to walk away with something. So we've designed and asked all the learning lab presenters to really make it an interactive hands-on learning experience because that's how adults learn. So Um, what's an example of a learning lab topic? Yeah. So for example, we have um, Charlie White, Shannon White, and Kathy Sisson from Adaptive Momentum are presenting a learning lab on like uh, leveraging empathy and those types of things. And they're going to actually, my understanding is they're going to walk people through, have you thought about really creating a persona? And do you know how that can help you in whatever you do? Most people, it's a marketing term and they don't really know what that is and how actually looking at what is an actual persona of people and how do you have more empathy and how do you know how to communicate them and talk. So people will be walking through an exercise of actually creating a persona in their organization. They could go back that could help them better communicate and better relate to people and better influence what they're trying to do. Like that might be one example. Okay. That that makes sense. And actually I was listening to a webinar with a friend from the NLI. 
yeah. uh, Neuroleadership Institute. And one of the things I did, it sounds very similar, and I really liked it. it was like, there was like little breaks in between the sessions. It actually, even during the session, and I found because I was watching it with a friend, and, and I was when we paused and we talked about it, it was so helpful because some of them I was like, I don't understand this concept, or yeah. you got this out of it, I got something different out of it, and it was immensely helpful, especially for someone who's like more of an internal processor or an external. I need to process, yep, um, and I need time for it all to kind of sit and, and, and debrief it, and be forced to debrief it. Otherwise, you know, you kind of left your own devices, which is dangerous. Exactly. But, um, exactly. I think that'll really be helpful for, for people, definitely, and, and as well as the conference learning summary and the the email follow up. I think those are all. Different, different in a good way, of course. Um, now, Scott, any anything you want to add about any of the partners that you guys are working with? I know, Rosie, you mentioned you know that you're kind of thoroughly vetting the vendors and the partners, but didn't know, Scott, if you had anything else to add on that front. Yeah, what's been refreshing is as we've attracted this wonderful lineup of speakers, uh, they've actually said, well, how can we help beyond just showing up and sharing our insights? And so we found opportunities for them to sponsor and or exhibit. Um, we're giving away Bob Chapman's book. Uh, he co-wrote it with Rosh Sodia. So our, our opening keynote and our closing keynote co-authored the book, Everybody Matters. Uh, so everyone's going to walk away with a copy of that. So we're trying to do some really neat touches uh, with speakers beyond just their 30, 45 minute or 75 minute learning lab, uh, trying to get them fully incorporating the experience. You're going to get to rub elbows with them, talk with them, you know, human to human. Right? They're not just this figure up at a podium giving their you know, 45 minute keynote. Hey, I got to hang out with Bob Chapman, Rosh Sodia, uh, Bob Keegan. So a tremendous lineup. And what's really been impressive is how they've stepped up to not only financially support us, uh, but also with just their presence. So um, yeah. it's, a, it's a win-win scenario. It's a great inaugural event with this lineup, plus a great experience for everyone that's going to attend. Yeah. Well, you already mentioned those three speakers. Um, any other speakers that you want to mention, either Rosie or Scott, anything that you I mean, that's going to, what's going to draw people, right? Not only what you've, you've talked about so far, but who's speaking? Oh my God, who's not? I feel like, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, kidding. but like, so, I mean, and some people may not know, I mean, we're geeking out, but like, if people don't know who these are again, Bob Chapman, you know, CEO of Barry Waymiller, co-author of Everybody Matters, Inc. Magazine named him number three CEO in the world lesser. And he's just an amazing human being. Raj Sisodi is our closing keynote, and he's the co-founder of Conscious Capitalism, which is all about human business. And he's he's written so many books, and he wrote The Firms of Endearment. And, you know, he really looks at companies who are human and, and has data and research and science he, behind, you know, how they outperform. And he's just he's just amazing. We have Kristen Hadid, who um, is kind of a, a I want to say, Simon Sinek protege and wrote Permission to Screw Up. And she's awesome and amazing and is coming to share her story. We have... Um, um, Andre Barry, who is the head of diversity and learning and development for MGM Worldwide, and he's just an amazing human being. Tony Horton, not the P90X Tony Horton, but um, <laughs> Tony Horton from the risk management and safety world is is really well known there, and he lo- talks about risk from a total total risk standpoint. And he um, he's coming from Australia to speak. Yeah. He's just high energy and gets it. It's about culture. And he works with, you know, really difficult populations. Like he spends a lot of time in mines in Mexico and things like that. And I mean, he's seen it all and he's just a wealth of knowledge to really look at how are you, are you really thinking about risk in the broadest sense? And what does that look like? We have um, Mitch Warner, who's a managing partner from the Arbinger Institute. Um, they do such great work on self-awareness and treating people as human. They have a book called The Outward Mindset and um, Leadership and Self-Deception and the Anatomy of Peace. We leverage their work a lot. In fact, I think they're get Scott, aren't they giving away um, uh, one of their trainings? Correct. So some lucky attendee will win a uh, two-day uh, event for the Arbiter Institute, which would be fantastic. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Linda Riddell, who is, uh, she. I think she calls herself a number mavericks or maverick of data, but she does a lot of great work of actually looking at data in a meaningful way for the um, wellness industry. And she's with the Validation Institute. Um, we have um, Andrew Sykes and Bree Miller from Habits at Work that are both speaking and really looking at how we shift our workplace. We have Lenise Anderson, who's um, uh, actually, she's. I think she's the current reigning Walcoa health promoter motion professional of the year, top health, whatever that is. And she's just amazing. It's going to be talking about um, diversity. We have Rachel Druckenmiller, who I know you've had on your show, who's awesome. We have um, Henry Albrecht, the CEO and founder of Limeade. 
um, is speaking. Um, we have Alexander McCobin, the CEO of Conscious Capitalism, is coming to talk about their work. Uh, we have Arthur Woods, who is the co-founder of Imperative with Aaron Hurst. They wrote The Purpose Economy. They do a ton of work on purpose at work. He's, he's had TED Talks. He's just amazing. Um, Michelle, have, that'll be on my, I've already interviewed him, so he'll be- uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He'll awesome. be on the show in a, in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Yeah. He's great. And, you know, we're excited to have him and he's imperative is giving everybody an opportunity to take the, their purpose profile for free. So again, like Scott, so these people are just stepping up. Michelle May from Am I Hungry? As you know, she's, um, she's speaking. We have, um, we have, uh, Nate Dvorak from Gallup is talking about well-being and millennials. We've got Steve Byron from the judgment index. He's done a ton of work, um, on just looking at, our joy choices and judgments and, and how they show up at the workplace. Um, we've got the very controversial Al Lewis <laughs> doing, um, doing a presentation about healthcare consumerism. Um, we have obviously Bob Keegan from Harvard and Immunity to Change and Deliberately Developmental Organizations. Um, we've got Wendy Lynch, who is well known in the, in the wellness world and so excited that she's going to be a part of this. We have um, Aaron Demick, who's one of the people from Barry Wamler Leadership Institute, is going to do a learning lab and walking people through some stuff. We've got Rebecca Johnson from Corporate Fitness Work. She's also on the planning committee. Um, we've got um, uh, Eric Marco. He is uh, he works with Myron Construction and he's been part of their dream project man uh, journey. And he's going to talk about what they've been doing. Um, we've got let's see. We have Cassie Buckroyd who is from Columbia Sportswear and really talking about how they've fused and integrated org effectiveness and wellness. We have Dave Contorno from. Um, he just changed. Uh, he's with ePowered Benefits, and he's going to really be talking about the work with Health Rosetta and how people actually can influence healthcare costs. We've got Tony Best uh, from Aduro, and they're also sponsoring um, a ton. Of just, people. And yeah, and and what's amazing is if people don't know who some of these people are, and you read their bios, like in their respective industries, because remember we're crossing disciplines. The majority of this core conference lineup are normally paid keynotes, and they're they're part of the core conference, and that's what I think what I am unbelievably excited about. And we're still getting emails today, people going, "Can I get involved?" And we're like, "Well, sorry, you know, the speaker panel is full, but I mean, we just have this amazing, amazing caliber of just dynamic people that is just I'm so excited about. It. I, I'm going to have a hard time choosing when, when the different sessions. Like that's for sure. I, I know it's going to be all. It's going to be like a wedding for you. Yeah. Like, you know how it just like passes by, and you're like, "What the hell? It just how did it go so fast? <laughs> what happened? Who was there?" Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think um, you know you've listened to a ton of great people. Some that either I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing, and one that you mentioned, Kristen Hadid. I heard at Wellness Underground. She is an awesome speaker, like no slides, no nothing, like just like you just listen to her stories and you get so much out of it. So that's just what I wanted to mention, but I am pumped. I'm looking forward to being there and um, hearing all these great speakers, but um, where can people find out more? And I can link it all up in the show notes, but let's go ahead and people know, let people know how to find you guys. Yeah, the main website is fusion the number two conference.com and it has all the info, the speakers, the location, the venue, all of that. We also do have a LinkedIn page. So if you're on LinkedIn and you search for Fusion 2.0 conference, you'll see the page there. We post uh videos of the speakers and, and all kinds of stuff. Also all the speakers, what's nice is many of them have written blog articles. So if you go to the website and you click on their speaker profile, there'll be a link, many of them, not all of them, but have written articles and it helps you get a little better sense of who they are and what they'll be talking about. Um, we also do have a Facebook page that you could just search for Fusion 2.0 Conference that we have more information and posting there. And we also now have a YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube and you search Fusion 2.0 Conference, you'll see some of the videos highlighting some of our speakers. So, but the main is the, is website. Yeah. And did you, did you mention Twitter, Rosie? It's also oh. on Twitter at human workplaces. No, I did not. Thank you. Yes. We're there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I will link all that up in the show notes, but guys, anything to add before we close out today, anything you want my listeners to hear? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I would just say, I am so excited that you know, when you have this idea, albeit it was born out of frustration, but when you have this idea and the people that have come together and that every single person we talk to is like, oh my gosh, this is so needed. Oh my gosh, why wasn't this a long time ago? Oh, wow. And this is amazing. And, and it's just so encouraging that everybody who's putting their blood, sweat and tears into this is on the right track. And I really do feel like this is the future of 
workplace and it's the future of humanity. And I just, I'm so thrilled and excited for, for the event. I can't wait for it to come. I'm geeking out of some of the people that I haven't met before, <laughs> but I'm just thoroughly humbled and um, inspired by everybody and what they're putting in to make this happen. So I hope that other people get curious and excited and want to come and be part of this because it's, yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. What she said, right. Um, You can hear hear the passion. It's contagious. Uh, When she started talking about this conference two years ago, it's like, okay, I think I get it. And now that we're, you know, weeks away, um, it's really exciting to see it happen. So I encourage everyone to, to check us out. Could even be best experience as a team. There's so much content that you could digest the show that you know you would benefit from having teammates with you. So uh, we know we're fighting year in budget. If you're on the calendar or so, reach out uh, to your leadership, see if there's money to attend. Um, we'd love to see you there. There is a justify, there is a justify your trip letter on the website as well. And Jenny, I'm just going to put it out there for your, your listeners that by the time this goes out, we will have a coupon code created. And if they put in redesigning 200, it'll take 200 off the registration fee too. Awesome. I will definitely let everyone know about the intro. So they say, Hey, coupon code at the end. Yep. Um, Awesome. Thanks for doing that, Rosie. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. I will, if I don't talk to you beforehand, I will see you in November at the Fusion 2.0 conference. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. And looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, Jen. If you want to make a greater impact on your organization's well-being and influence decision makers to step into the next generation of wellness, Join me and my colleague, Rebecca Johnson, for our new training, Next Generation Wellness from Theory to Practice, starting in September. To get on the priority notification list, go to redesigningwellness.com forward slash impact and influence. We hope to see you there.